What's up guys, Dr. D here from the OneHive 2.0 family, uh, bringing you a very special recap. Wiser's on vacation, and so I got to do the recap from the Season 2, Week 2, uh, CWL Invite. Though, I'm not going to do it by myself. I have got one of the best attackers from the 2.0 family and from the game as a whole uh, with me here. And we're going to hop over, we're going to have a look at the war statistics, and we're going to see what McGrady's thoughts were on this war. So here are the basic war statistics, and as I promised, I've got McGrady here with me. How's it going, man? Hey, how's it going, Dr. D? Hey, it's going sure. great. Um, so uh, a really great win here. Um, as you can see, 32 triples on 2.0 to 30 triples, and in, in North remembers a 93.78 to a 92.8. Nine zero. Uh, McGrady and I have got uh, several attacks picked out here that we're gonna um, that we're gonna check out. Uh, we're gonna start down here with um, number forty. Um, number forty was uh, Bella. Um, we'll just go ahead and pull this up. But uh, Grady, any thoughts about this before we get rolling? Well, as you see the troop composition, you already know what you are going to see. This is a witch lab. This very famous attack on this new meta that uh, exploits the fact that witches are not only tanky, but also they do a lot of damage. And, uh, well, uh, if you are not familiar with this style of attack, um, you should learn it because it's been proving it is going to be very useful on the certain types of bases. Yeah, so uh, Wiser and I did a, a video on the Witch Slap. And um, if you haven't checked it out, you should go and go and check it out. You know, in the um, Invicta CWL uh, war, we, we were up against Trollstein, and they they posted on Twitter that they learned an awful lot from our Town Hall Mines, and this was it. This was what they meant when they said that. Uh, so, you know, the, the video that Wiser and I did has, you know, four or five different variations on this. But as you can see, in, in this type of base, it's, it's not for every base, but... You've got a lot of these um, bases with air defenses set back um, like this, and so uh, you can push all the way to the back end of that base before you have to worry about any of those uh, healers getting targeted, and we'll speed it up just a little bit. But um, Bella's just pushing through here. Uh, has not lost. She just lost one healer to a black bomb, but other than that, has lost no healers up to this point. And what's amazing is all she has left right now are witches. So. Yep, it is amazing that uh, sometimes you forget how tanky those larries are because they were they will get replaced every time and uh, they will tank for the witches. So as you can see, there's like a ton of them that are hitting <laughs> everything. And when people are preparing and building those bases for a uh, massive Lalo defense and screw up all the pathing, well, they you open up to other attacks, and this is one of the uh, ones that can exploit those offset 80s that you were talking about just like a second ago. So, okay. all right. yep, three stars. So there we go, three stars. Um, Next, what did we have chosen next? I, I, I don't know. 34, I think. 34, okay. Oh yeah, dirt. So we'll pause. The old this. school. Yeah, uh, the old school. We'll pause this real quick. Um, I mean, you can look at that right now. There's no rage in there, and that means that he's not going to be. Uh, he's not going to be coming with bowlers in the CC, which is what we normally see with this type of army composition. This is an old school shattered goho, and I love that it's back. I mean, uh, with the addition of of the new hogs, it's it's really really. Uh, Goho t attacks have been quite powerful for a while now, but getting rid of these bowlers and, and just um, healing these hogs has been, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's fun. It's fun to do the thing that I kind of grew up doing in Clash of Clans, and Derp does it just so well. Yeah, exactly. And uh, uh, what I see from him is uh, uh, excellent recognition of a funnel. A berry is a funnel with a couple of wizards to make sure that the king and the, the golems go in. And not only that, but he recognized where are the uh, potential spots for spring traps and bombs. So um, a lot of them are negated by his entry, by the BK nice. entry. And the Queen entry, they negate about five potential good spots for spring traps. And since there are six at TH9 level, uh, well, there's only like 
one good spot left or two maybe yeah. for the Hawks. And uh, as long as you can heal those up, and now that they have more uh, HP than they had before, well, you can see what happens. Yeah, I mean, he knows, right, that there's that right there is a great spot for a double, for a giant bomb and, and takes it out. Still has a heal left in the bag. Lots of hogs. So, I mean, I think there he total has lost three hogs to uh, spring traps. So, that's, uh, yeah, something like he hit a couple. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, most of them were cleared out from the entry. So. Uh, very, very nice job, Derp. Fun to watch. And that is it. I mean, it is clean up now. Three stars. Yep. All right. We'll let this finish up here quick. And next we have number 24. Here. All right. Um, I love to. I love to recap dragon attacks and these um, these town hall nine bases. I'm gonna pause this quick. These town hall nine bases with the air defenses that are so exposed like this. I mean, putting air defenses right next to each other uh, it makes it an easy zap quake. He's only gonna zap quake one of the air defenses here. You can see that. Um, but he's able to get to all of these air defenses, and so that's exactly what he's going to do. Um, and then once that's down, uh, he's he's got two spells just to use for his dragons. Which is yep, and what Paragon Hunter here, like he's a very skilled dragon attacker, and he easily recognizes how the queen can reach the air defense at the top at two. Uh, like that wall that you can see there trying to offset something, it doesn't really work for the queen because her range is big enough to get to that air defense. And then mm. if you watch how the sweepers are pointing, well, they are not on the path of the dragons. So by sending the first um, hound in, he protects the dragon so they can set the funnel and then go straight for the air defenses and the queen uh, with a very high HP on all of them and uh, at this point uh, well you can already tell that the threats that the dragons will will face are the the black bombs and the next bow and archer tower and the teslas and that's it and there's just a couple of teslas uh, so um well it will be very very difficult for this raid to go wrong at this point even though that he just has a minion uh left to deploy <laughs> Yeah. But slowly but surely. Yeah, as soon as that, I mean, that, that expo up there is, is kind of the, the the major worry, but he's got four dragons sitting down here that are going to go straight up to that expo. Of course, he's got dragons trying to work through that town hall, which takes a bit of time, and they get eaten up a little bit by that Tesla, but yeah. There's so many alive. As you can yeah. see, it's just the first black bomb. He trips. He already has 89% um, of the base, only two threats left, and, uh, and well, there it is. a very powerful unit, the dragon, and when used correctly, it's very deadly. Yeah, I love to watch his attacks. He's so good with dragons. He is, he is. All right. What did we have next? Looks like 22. There we go. Oh, yeah. Pailano. Do you know that Pailano, he's from Japan? He is, yeah. I, I, I don't know that I knew that, actually. Um, I, or maybe I did. I don't know. <laughs> um, Anyways, any but, comments on this? Yeah, so I, I think that the, he does this attack quite frequently. I, I, I know I've recapped videos in Invicta with him uh, doing this queen charge. And I, 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 I always comment, like, man, he brings an awful lot of wall breakers. Um, but every attack, it's like this. It's, you know, eight to ten wall breakers. Usually he's, he kind of sprays them initially. I think he might be a little bit nervous. Um, drops these, la these next three right here and throws a rage down, knowing that he's going to need that to push through. I mean, technically he wouldn't need that unless there was a, a, a bomb in there, which... There likely wouldn't be a bomb on the inside like that, but uh, yeah. 
No, it's very unlikely. A Tesla or something weird like that uh, might uh, be a problem to go through two layers of um, walls as he does. But this is something that is more utilized uh, at a TH10 level for those like crazy queen charges that you can see sometimes. But uh, having him do this with only three minutes and finish the base anyways, uh, that's quite impressive. That, th th this was a go-to attack when you had uh, three minutes and 30 seconds, but with, uh, oh. with uh, a removal of those 30 extra seconds, this uh, was very difficult to execute because you wouldn't have enough time for your queen to go through all the objectives. But in very particular bases, as Bailano is showing us day in and day out, this strategy can work very well. Yeah, I mean, has not used. He's he's still got a rage um, sitting there that has not been dropped. He's going to use it here on this uh, Teslas. Actually, it's kind of fortunate that these Teslas are there because his hounds were not. I mean, he only popped one hound after all of that. So uh, I think I don't think that that last hound winds up popping, but the Teslas pop a hound here for him, which was nice. And uh, and that is it. I mean, it's cleanup. That is it. There uh... it is. I, I just a thought popped my mind right now. It was that the fact that now loons are much, much faster. They are a very strong troop. Uh, it makes it so that you can go for those queen charges again. Because uh, if you had those um, other loons that there were um, meta like six months ago or something yeah, that feels yeah. like uh, an eternity ago, you couldn't do that. The, the loons, even though they look slow right now, as, you, as we are seeing the last uh, seconds of the attack, they were much, much slower back in the day. So, hey, three stars with a beautiful queen charge by Pailano. Yeah, that's a good point. I've no, I, I haven't even thought about that, but that's a great point. Um, 21. Who was 21? Oh, yeah, Dally. Thoughts on this one? All yours. So what, what I thought was interesting about this, um, and this again is one of the issues with these air defenses that are sitting out here really exposed, um, makes it easy for uh, a, a queen walk to get those air defenses and not have to worry about taking damage to those, um, to those healers. And, <laughs> and the, uh, the, the same applies to, um, uh, you know, bringing hogs around once once you take out some of these these uh, point defenses um, with hogs, uh, it's it's uh, you know uh, it's it's easy. Yep. It's an easy game once once the hogs are through that stuff. So um, he's you know setting his funnel um, on on one side there uh, and and then know, taking out air defense. Uh, I, I gotta interrupt you here because there's something that uh, now I'm realizing that even impresses me the most is. How composed was him uh, when he was doing his attack? Because uh, in, in my opinion, everything went wrong. When he dropped the queen, he wasn't quick enough with the poison, and all the go the goblins were uh, onto him, and he couldn't um, avoid uh, using the ability. So that was something that I don't think he wanted to do. Then he used the baby dragon and gets killed instantly to set the funnel, but he has the funnel uh, good enough uh, has to be able to continue with the attack. Then the bowlers, as you can see, now they took the cannon with the lucky bounce, so he can get both air defenses as predicted. But uh, in another uh, scenario, that may have not happened, and uh, the bowlers um, could have been dead at that point, and maybe like there's an additional defense. So in, in my opinion, uh, this attack uh, shows how now he loses the queen, yeah. and uh, he just keeps... Keeps on, uh, keeps on doing the attack. Keeps on um, utilizing the, the, the all the uh, three minutes and all the troops he has uh, to try and three star the base anyway, regardless of how um, not uh, according to plan the things are going. <laughs> no, and, that's uh, a good point. Yeah. Yeah, man. And, and, and uh, being able to react like that, guns? I always like watching those things. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, the yeah, the queen dying was. I mean was terrible but on the on the flip side of that that uh, those healers switched over onto those hogs all of the air defenses were gone he would have lost all of those hogs because they had every single skeleton trap was on those hogs for the whole raid so it was it was um, a bit of lucky misfortune i guess yeah but that, those are the things that if you are not experienced 
uh, with uh, when things are going bad, what to do and how to react. You can easily uh, run out of time and or have problems like that. And uh, what I see from him here is a lot of skill to be able to uh, keep your composure. Okay, it didn't go according to plan, but that doesn't mean that I cannot try and get uh, the three star or at least as much information as possible for the next guy. So mm -hmm. keeps on doing the attack and uh, gets rewarded by the three star. So. Good job, good job, Dali boy. Very impressed with your composure here. Yeah, great points. Okay. 19? Yes! Okay. This is the, the last Town Hall 9. This was the, um, their, their uh, top Town Hall 9. And King does... Um, King has done a few of these dragon attacks that I've recapped from Invicta. And I really, really love it. So he, he recognizes something really important on this base. And that is... Air defense is sitting right out in the open over here, and air defense is very easily accessible over here. And so winds up breaking his army in half, sending, you know, um, a portion over here at three and a portion over here at nine um, with the, the goal of taking out all of the air defenses. And once those air defenses are out, he's got five dragons and a, and a baby dragon to uh, take out the rest of this base. And... What I think is, is cool is you seldom see somebody able to use three three spells on on a uh, on a dragon attack on the dragons actually right I mean most of the time uh, dragon attacks you're you're bringing um, five spell spaces just to take care of one AD and obviously here he he used one spell to take care of all four ADs. Yes, and kids, don't try this at home unless you know what you are doing. Because, um, yes, uh, I say that because he recognized something uh, in this space. I, I not, I'm not sure if this was a cleanup attack or not, but, um, okay, like five dragons plus the sixth on the CC that he built. Uh, when you remember that there are four black bombs and you don't bring any heals, you have to be very confident on where the black bombs are at for this attack to be successful. And um, I believe that um, uh, he was thinking that uh, our fine folks here at North, North members, I'm sure that they are uh, good, good base builders and um, they recognize how uh, people can take out two air defenses and then, um, well, as that black bomb pops, uh, it, it makes just the point a little bit more pallet even, which is a uh, couple of uh, black bombs on one of the uh, pair of defenses, the air defenses, and then a couple more on the other side. And um, that's for defending anyway about any Lalo attack that has suicide heroes going for the two, um, the two air defenses on one side, for an instance. So what uh what king did here is what exactly what you said uh having the split uh heroes attack to kill all the air exposed air defenses which is perfect but uh more onto that there was the angle he chose for the dragons recognizing where with where the threats would be and uh her that the spell choice um was actually on point and uh well as you can see the queen survives because he handled her very well and uh, the dragons are dead because um, uh, well even though that six dragons is a lot of destruction there's uh, there's a lot of threats for them as well during the raid yeah. so yeah yeah but uh, i mean a very uh, very cool attack yeah I, I forgot i forgot that he did lose every dragon during that attack i actually think he said that when he was i think he said he, he might lose everyone but uh but able to clear the base so um, okay, uh, let's move into our 10v10 triples. Um, first one is, it's you. So, hey! <laughs> um, why don't you walk us through this? I'll pause it quick. Um, let me know when you want me to hit go. Okay, so this was, uh, as all of our t stands uh, are a uh, joint effort. Um, we work very closely together, all the t stands in the clan. And uh, there's usually a couple of us doing the the planning and uh, follow-ups uh, and so on. So I believe that this base was already hit with a very similar plan to the one that I am uh, attempting here. And uh, well, I just uh, changed a couple of things because I, I went through the plan with uh, Chat, I believe. Uh, before hitting myself and uh, unfortunately he was very close to the restart but couldn't get it and I, I was 
I was um, able to correct a couple of things upon his suggestions and get the three star anyways. So as you can see, there's a couple of um, columns. Uh, I believe there are bowlers on the CC. Uh, there's a jump, there's a rage, there's a couple of heels and three hastes. So uh, I will aim for the two uh, air defenses. If I don't remember incorrectly, you can play whenever you want okay. and we can go along with it. As it unleashes, there was so much analysis on all the bases that I cannot remember uh, all the things that we did anyways. Yeah, okay, Ted, Ted was helping me live with this attack and I made a couple of mistakes on the entry. As you can see, like a couple of troops dying because I didn't deploy them very well. And uh, fortunately enough, the rest of the entry um, was was good was uh, on point and the, the the jump was placed as you can see so I could connect both compartments get access to both their defenses and the queen uh, on Chad's attack um, the queen survived quite uh, quite a lot and um, he could start a lot of portion of the raid without having to um, uh, be aware of her uh, while, while she was killing buildings in the inside of the raid. So, the hound pops here. Bowlers are still alive. The bomb tower messed me up big time. It was one hit away from being killed. And uh, for my Lalo portion, uh, I hoped that one would have been down, but my queen wouldn't go towards that direction. So I had to adjust my Lalo deployment. Uh, initially, it was thought to go straight to the Inferno, then Arch Tower, then Mortar. But uh, I adjusted the haste. Uh, it, and they path uh, through the inferno uh, perfectly, and then the heal to protect the loons from the skellies and from the wizard towers. As the hound was about to pop, the the, last, the rest of the loons were going in as well, collapsing there. And as you can see, my queen up there, um, she's tanking for all the defenses, and that's what I know that I could bring the three backhand loons to target the mortar, so they could go towards the air defense right after. And uh, while well, they survived long enough, so they could kill that, have a nice play there, and the base was done for at that point. And we were uh, very, very happy to be able to get that, that three star. I'm not sure if it was the first one uh, or the second one uh, we took, but um, since we are putting a lot of effort, our TH stands on getting better at the game. Uh, this is uh, something that we're all celebrating when someone, it doesn't matter if it's me or if it's someone else that is getting the three star, uh, we are just very, very happy that our plans have their have results. So right. this one set the tone for us and uh, well. You know, um, so I was I was in the room listening to the, the planning for these um, triples as well. What was really nice about this war is uh, Town Hall 9's finished with I think we, we cleared the nines very quickly and had 12 scouts. And so uh, we were able to connect up with uh, several of the tens and, and run through a plan and have a nine scout um, exactly. Rather than oftentimes it's like, oh, we'll just do a ground attack, throw some Valks in there and, and see what's in the CC, try and find some bombs and Teslas. But this, this was methodical in, in how we approach this as a, as a town hall nine like get as far as you can here expose as many black bombs as you can find out what pathing is going to look like and it was it was very very cool um captain sparrow or riggle i guess is, is the account that he had um did one of the best town hall nine scouts that i think i've ever seen so props to him um yes Absolutely, and the fact that the TH9s understand how important they are in the wars uh, and how important their scouts are helps us tremendously. Uh, they are willing to be patient and uh, and uh, listen to us and try and give us as much information. So it's not only the TH10s working on their game, but also the TH9 uh, giving us enough information uh, so we can have a better chance at ripping those bases. So it's an overall team effort, and uh, it, it definitely feels rewarding when you can win a war with hits like that that every like a th9 a th10 another th10 everyone was participating on those hits so it's it's very rewarding i mean very very rewarding for all of us absolutely okay uh, let's check out um lane and his hit on 17. 
go ahead and take it away, Grady. Okay, this one, um, I had a 97% uh, to start on this base on my hit. Uh, it was a complete different entry. And uh, at the very end of the war, uh, we decided that it may be a good idea to just suicide the heroes where he is doing those and, and send even more uh, hounds and loons to this base for them to buff so they wouldn't face the sweepers. So he gets the objectives that he is looking for. He gets the queen. He gets one of the air defenses as he's heading towards the other one. And uh, the king here, the guy is being a nuisance. The queen barely survives, kills the town hall, and he says, okay, I have to start my, my Lalo deployment uh, regardless if the queen gets the air defense or not, because if not, I will run out of time regardless of how good it goes. So... Everything was not working at the start, as you can see, <laughs> since they are not bathing towards the Inferno. We kind of designed the deployment so they will bath towards the Inferno, but uh, a little mistake on the execution made it so they were, they, they circumvented it. But fortunately enough, uh, a loon or two bathed th through there and uh, killed the Inferno, which was by far the biggest threat. And he sent some backend loons to try and get the Expo, which was a threat that he identified. The other portion of the Lalo was going just as planned, so he had to adjust, and um, he saw that the backend wasn't needed for him. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, the thing is that Blaine is an individual that he's very skilled with loons and knows um, how fast they go, what can he do, what he can... I cannot get away with. And, uh, well, at this point, he was hoping and praying that the loons were fast enough to pass through the sweeper, through the the Tesla, as you can see, and then still there's a couple of threads, but the PK is alive. And uh, he's only 33, but he's tanking uh, for both defenses, so he can snipe the wizard tower, which is by far the biggest threat to those minions. Uses the ability, slowly but surely, gets the wizard tower, gets the archer tower, and everything spread out everywhere. As uh, you can easily see that this wasn't planned as the, <laughs> the CC goes out at the last second, all the pubs target, the hound was giving us uh, panic attacks. <laughs> there was a hut that he targeted with the last minion. The CC went down to the one balloon that was alive, and uh, mm. it was the messiest but uh, <laughs> fantastic uh, three star by playing again, uh, just as Dali, keeping the composure, trying to play by its strengths, and knowing that uh, loons are a very po powerful unit. So, hey, another three star. Yeah, a very cool attack. Oh, just to pull it back up, uh, when when you went in, you went in from like the uh, three to six wall side here, right? Like in this way, is that right? Yes. That's what yes. I'm thinking. Um. All right, and the last town hall ten triple armor queen. This is Chad Fowler. His town hall nine is Chad Fowler. You guys know him, so go ahead and take this one away, great. Yep, this one I found with him. And I, I helped him. Uh, this was a very heavy um, kill squad entry that has the um, well the purpose to kill all the air defenses, uh, arch towers, expos that are uh, at the core. He's setting up uh, a really good funnel uh, with uh, as few troops as he can. So everything converges towards the tip of uh, that three three o'clock location where everything should go in and um, and just kind of brute force their way uh, onto that lots of point defenses that are at, at that at that location. Mm -hmm. So CC comes out. Uh, I remember at this point uh, doing my only contribution to him uh, as helping, and it was place the poison. <laughs> And he was, oh shit. And I'm like, you're fine. And that's the whole conversation we had during the raid because that's something that we are quite uh, trying to do as much as we can, which is have someone that really knows your plan 
to be live with you while you are doing it, just in case if you can um, uh, add something of value while you are doing your attack if something goes wrong. DH10 is so uh, unforgiving that a little bit of, um, uh, of a mistake can cost you the rate and sometimes it's very uh, unfair and unforgiving, but as you can see, the kill squad got everything that was needed for it, and um, the Lalo deployment that he did was absolutely gorgeous. There's not a lot of threats, but the air defenses and the back end. And he has a heal spell for that back end with the tower locations, and with uh, about eight, I say, loons alive plus four for the back end. Uh, slowly but surely. This is a base that is primed to go down. So he sends the last couple, he uses the haste, he wasn't um, playing with fire here, he just sent everything, uh, convert, I believe he uses the poison even to make sure everything is down. This was a bit of a scary moment because yeah. a wizard tower alive, hitting those loons, but hey, he got it. He got so it. Nice. These, these attacks are so fun to watch, especially if you've set in on the planning. You, you know how things are, are, are supposed to be falling uh, falling together, and to see them all kind of collapse across a base, it's just a lot of fun. I mean, uh, the the planning that goes into a, a Town Hall 10 Lalo is, is unbelievable. And again, as you said before, uh, I don't remember exactly who scouted this one, but... They did a similar entry with a couple of columns as well, so we know how far two level 30 um, heroes can get with uh, bowlers and the same uh, um, and the same what's it called the same spell composition. So again, props to our TH9s because they are set it up for success, and uh, we were able to capitalize on the on their their good start of the war. And uh, the fact that they provided about, I don't know, what was it, 10 scouts, something like that. Yeah. So, so um, super good. The uh, a, a big win for week two, season two of CWL Invite. Thoughts there? Well, uh, first win for us, uh, as close as it was last week with Peace Mode. Uh, we were very happy to win this one against our members. Unfortunately, they had two attacks remaining. They had a problem with a guy that didn't show up at uh, TH11, so that was pretty clutch for them to not have it. Uh, it would have been uh, much more closer had uh, they had the two extra attacks, but uh, I'm very pleased personally on how we are approaching those wars, focusing on ourselves, focusing on our attacks, and focusing on defense the day prior to, to the actual war. Uh, to make the tweaks, to make sure that everyone is running the, the correct pace. And, uh, well, uh, this feels very rewarding for our 50 members of the 2.0 uh, main clan, but also from the Picta guys that are always aware and always helping out. Uh, so I am I'm, I am very happy that we, we got to, to experience a win on the CWL so early, and uh, it gives us a little bit of momentum for our next match uh, against Cold September next week. So, yeah, man, Good. me too. A great win. It was a lot of fun to be a part of. So, I, I mean, I'm, I'm looking forward to next week as well. Um, any other thoughts in closing? Uh, honestly, uh, I hope we can make another recap next week and uh, with a similar outcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that no, would be very too. pleasing. Yeah, absolutely. So. All right, man. Sounds good. Um, I will uh, wrap this up then, and I will see you in game. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. It was all right. a pleasure. Pleasure was all mine. This is Dr. D from uh, One Hype 2.0 Family saying, Clash on. <laughs>